Hello everyone and welcome to my video on the inconsistencies in the wilderness. With the recent update adding a change to the player owned house altar that doesn't work anywhere else, as well as spell filtering being added, the topic of inconsistencies in the wilderness keeps popping up all over RuneScape social media. People are asking why this isn't on the wiki anywhere and why the information isn't available in game. This video won't address everything and I'll probably miss something so please comment if I do. Just before we start, if you do learn anything from this video, please hit the like and subscribe button, it does mean a lot. I'm going to keep this video quick and to the point, so let's get right into it. First, let's start with the one everyone knows about, the special attack orb up here. Now, we all know you can special attack from this menu right here, but obviously, normally for PVM encounters, we do use this orb because it saves coming to this tab. However, when you enter the wilderness, this gets disabled and you can't click it no matter what you do. This is because people thought that PKs had muscle memory and they needed to keep clicking this and it wouldn't be fair if some people could then click this. But the reason that this is one of the most well known is in one of the Jagex's most recent near miss polls, they are considering re-enabling this for the wilderness, PvP worlds and PvP minigames. However, for now, you cannot click it and you have to spec by doing this. Next is, as you can see, Jagex have recently enabled spell filtering on desktop versions other than just mobile. This means you can filter spells and then they'll fill up the entire book rather than being tiny clicks. So if I do utility, you can see everything is really big. The resizing on these was recently added, but as soon as I jump the ditch, they go back to the normal size. This is obviously a big inconsistency because you can get used to this in PVM and then again you go into the wilderness and you're like, wait, why can't I click them properly? So bear that in mind. Here's another weird one that most people only learnt recently due to the wilderness bosses being added. If you're in combat and you eat an anglerfish, it only puts you to 99, you do not get the overheal from it. You see here it says it'll take me to 118, you eat it and it doesn't. It's the exact same for blighted anglerfish. And to actually counteract this, you need to get out of combat and then wait a few seconds. As you can see, if I start eating now, there you go, it goes straight up to 121. It's the same for the Blighted. I don't really understand why this is in the game, and at the very least, Blighted Anglerfish should allow you to eat up to that in combat because they are to be used in the wildy. But Jagex, big Jagex. A recent change also involves using bones on altars. If I click this burn right here and click the Gilded Altar, it actually starts using it from the top of the inventory. So if I click this one, it's the first. If I click this one, it's the first. And this was changed in a recent update. Now this one's not really a wilderness inconsistency because it does happen in Forthos Dungeon as well. However, if we go to the Wildy Altar, you can see that if I click this burn down here, it uses the one down there. And you might not think this is a big deal. But with recent advancements in Runelight, you can change to a client layout where you can move your inventory to the left of the altar and you could just simply spam click like this. And then you'd be able to use every burn. I'm not gonna ruin my settings, so I don't wanna do it, but it is something to consider. In my opinion, if they do it in one place, I should do it to them all, and this is technically an inconsistency in the wilderness. So we'll leave it in. Now let's go over to Revenant ones. The first one is really obvious. When you're in combat with a Revenant, you actually can't teleport out. You need to wait two seconds and then it'll teleport you. This was recently added to favor PKs against Revenant bots, but it does make it harder for players to actually get away. The next one, however, is a really interesting one and I don't think many people in the game know it at all. If you die a PVM death to a Revenant, which we'll do right now, this is if no player has attacked you in the wilderness or else they will get a loot key. But if we die to this Revenant, it's kind of weird, it's like old school, old school death mechanics. You'll get a message in your chat box saying that you've got a gravestone and the marker will pop up saying that you've got 15 minutes to get your loot. However, all of your loot instantly drops to the floor, readily available to every other player. There's the death, so watch the chat box. You can see it says, uh, some of your dropped items are being held in a gravestone near where you died. So let's go back right now. And as you can see, there's no gravestone, but all of my items are there. This is very weird and very inconsistent with the rest of the game, and I believe that the only place this happens is the Rev Caves. Now, just to show this even further, I'm going to get my friend to die right now in front of my eyes, <laughs> just in game, and we're going to see the loot instantly appear. Watch this. 
As you can see, all of his loot instantly appears for me to pick up, and I can pick up any of it. It doesn't go into a gravestone, it just sits on the floor like old school death mechanics. Now, what's interesting here, we'll go over this a little bit later on with the drop mechanics, but you can see anglerfish in this, and that means that consumables can be traded in the wilderness like this. So, if someone's dying to a PKer, you could set up an account to die to a rev with 28 anglerfish, and then it'd appear to everybody, so you could use that. Not really useful, but it is really interesting. Next, we've got one that, again, is to help out the PKers a little bit. When the Din's Bulwark and Justicio are put into the game, a lot of people are using them in the wilderness to do things like Chaos Altar with a very, very low risk to die. Now, all these items have a damage reduction effect, meaning that you take less damage, meaning that players' max hits are lower. For example, if someone could AGS set an 80, maybe they could only hit you for a 60 now. But in the wilderness, these unique effects aren't that great because they don't work anymore. They still have their defensive bonuses and they are still best in slot defense, but not having that damage mitigation means people get hit more than they expect because they expect a max hit of X amount, but it turns out they can actually hit the full amount on you. So bear that in mind if you do want to use any defensive items like these for the wilderness. On the topic of the defensive one, it is worth noting that Elysian Spirit Shield does work. It's passive effect of having a chance to reduce the damage that the player receives by 25%, does work in PvP and wildy situations, so bear that in mind. Next, we've got auto casting. We have an Ancient Staff and Ice Barrage. If we Ice Barrage this guard and stand next to him to make sure that we're in combat, when we swap to the Blowpipe and then back to the Ancient Staff, it's still on Ice Barrage. However, if we go to the Wilderness and attack this skeleton, there we go. So if we equip the Blowpipe, as you can see here, it's auto casting. When we go to the blur pipe and back, we actually lose the auto cast and we'd have to set it up again. Now, obviously, again, this is because of PK's muscle memory and actually swapping to the spell book. However, I think this is something that should really be made consistent because auto casting is generally like a tick slower anyway, so people wouldn't do it, but it'd be nice to give them the option. Next is Vengeance. If we venge and attack a mob outside of the wilderness, it looks like this, where you run towards them after venging and then they hit you back. However, if you venge in the wilderness, you see that your character stalls on the spot and then basically teleports. People have used this in PvP for a long time, you've probably seen clips of it, but it is something that only happens in the wilderness. Now a few that I need my friend for again. So here he is. The first thing we'd like to show you is if you drop a tradable item in the wilderness, you can instantly see it on the floor rather than having a timer where only you can see it and pick it back up. We'll show that with some black eyed chaps. As you can see, they instantly appeared. But if you drop a consumable, such as a brew, a restore, manta rays, or anything like that, you actually can't see it, and I believe you can never see it. Not only does it not instantly appear, it doesn't appear for other players at all if it's manually dropped. Let's let him drop one now. And we can't see anything, so let's just confirm that he's done it. Okay, cool. So we can't see anything under his feet. So you've got to just watch out for this. And remember, if you drop something in the wilderness, people can instantly see it. Next, we've got the blowpipe. Jagex made it so on players, the blowpipe is a three tick weapon on rapid, even though everywhere else it's two tick. Let's show an example. On this end, two tick, as you can see, fires as normal. But as soon as I swap to a player, there's an extra tick delay between attacks. So, if you're PKing or anti PKing with a blowpipe, it might be better to pick a different weapon. Okay, so we all know that you can use chins and stuff in the wilderness. Now, if you attack an NPC that would normally chin a player, even with PK skull prevention off, it doesn't actually cause you to skull, which is a really interesting mechanic. And if you use ice barrage on the NPC, you also don't skull. So, you can barrage NPCs without skulling on a player. Now, I sculled on Mo earlier, and I went and died to Galvec to lose my skull. But if I ask him to hit me, he doesn't actually skull. So he can fight me without being sculled. That's a really interesting mechanic. Now, the last two things are very brief, so I'll just mention them quickly to end the video. First, some areas of the wilderness are singles plus combat. Now, no areas outside of the wilderness are, 
and the only areas inside the wilderness are the Revenant Caves and the singles versions of the new wilderness bosses, Artyo, Spindle and Calvarion. What this means is if you're attacking the boss, an other player can attack you. However, in a normal singles area, if you're attacking an NPC, then you, no one can attack you. It's kind of like the boxing that was going on in Deadman Mud. So bear that in mind. If you're at the revs or the normal bosses, you can be attacked by anyone, even if you're in combat. And finally, the biggest one. If you hop worlds in the wilderness or on a PvP world, you do not get the welcome screen. <laughs> Everyone probably knew this one, but I thought I'd say it anyway. And that's the video. If you learned anything new in this video, please like and subscribe. It does mean a lot. I saw a lot of people wanted this kind of video, so here it is. Thanks for watching. Love you and leave you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!